Just, just a little different context, so from the other side of the world, from a very, very small country, you can't find us on a map, essentially. But um, maybe just the, the background of uh, where we are. So we are somewhere between Indonesia and Malaysia. Um, very, very small country. It's a city-state island. And uh, we have a huge, you know, huge population to us in terms of land size. But um, I guess it's very small for all of you. Very small land area, lots of rain. Sorry. Lots of rain, but no land to capture it. So essentially, we are a water scarce um, country, and which is why we, we need to do things a little bit differently because we, we have no other choice. So um, other than our local reservoirs, we do have water coming in from Malaysia, which we <coughs> operate the plant there. We have to do desalination and we have to do water reuse like Australia. So, yeah. So, I um, apologise for the words up there, but essentially PUB is the National Water Agency. We are the one and only water agency <laughs> in Singapore. And uh, we have to take care of uh, water treatment, water reuse, uh, use wastewater treatment, uh, drainage. Uh, so, we have to take care of floods or whatever, and desalination, yeah. So um, with us, we have two other agencies. So our regulator for drinking water is the national, uh, sorry, sorry, the Singapore Food Agency now, which is a new agency. So they regulate our drinking water for trade affluent discharge for um, secondary treated uh, wastewater affluent discharge to the sea that is by our national environment agency. So we are essentially reporting to the same minister. Yeah. So um, a little bit different maybe from some of you here. Um, as I mentioned just now, we, we pretty much have to deal with everything. So whatever we do upstream, we have to consider what happens downstream because it's essentially the same organizations, very different departments, but we have to answer to each other. So for wastewater treatment, for example, in terms of micropollutants, we have to think about what happens when it goes down to the water reuse, what happens when it goes out to the sea. So for Singapore, um, we have a sort of a segregated um, drainage and sewerage system. So secondary treated effluent from the wastewater treatment plants go out to the sea. So they don't go back to the surface waters where we tap our water sources from. The other way they go is by... They go to our advanced water treatment plants for water reuse. And in terms of water reuse, we don't do direct portable use at this stage. Um, we go for indirect. So we supply it to the wafer fed companies because they want ultra pure water. And um, yeah. And then as part of it, we augment our reservoirs when the reservoirs level are running low. So and then after that they'll go undergo water treatment again. So we don't do it direct. But um, this is one of our strategic plans to, to increase our water resources because we are so small. Yeah. So maybe from that angle, um, so, so just for this afternoon, um, because we, will, we have to discuss something, I was asked to present something on wastewater treatment or micropollutants, I will share something that, that we did with the university. But um, just to keep in mind that, that that is basically for our wastewater treatment plants, for our um, what we call our water reuse treatment facilities, which is for our new water factories. Um, we, we have, a, because we have UV, we have MF and RO. So those that go through there, there uh, is, there's this additional barriers. Having said that, um, if we keep the whole water loop in mind and that we are basically in charge of everything, um, we are also looking at some of the new technologies and some of the emerging micropollutants. Yeah, so that, that's cover up, covered in the second part. And um, my apologies also because we use the word emerging contaminants or contaminants or emerging concerns. So in the subsequent slides, you'll see ECs. So just bear with me on that. Yeah, so this is the, the one that I'm sharing, which is done with the university. So um, essentially what they do is they take the feed for the wastewater treatment plant. So this is an operational, fully operational wastewater treatment plant with a conventional activated sludge system and a membrane bioreactor system. Um, though the membrane variety wasn't meant to remove most of the micropollutants, but you know, they were just seeing what is the removal efficiencies. So it's like a, it's like a survey of how the plants are doing. So um, it, it, the, the, the details can be found in this paper. Um, so I'll just go through the slides 
rather quickly because in the interest of time, but I'll just highlight some of the key points. So um, the, the objective of their study was to investigate the occurrence. So what, what PUB does is we supply, we supply the, the water that they need for the test. Yeah? And then they were evaluating where the a fully operational memory virus reactor system with a CAS system and how they would compare. So, um, so in this study, they select the, the target um, micropollutants based on the following criteria, consumption, occurrence, potential risk to health, and also whether the, the team could analyze in the lab. So just to run through, these are some of those that are covered in these studies. Yeah, it's a pretty long list, but uh, it will be, it will, you can find that in the, their published paper. Yeah. And then some of the rest. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the, the schematic diagram of this water reclamation plant. We call it water reclamation plant, which is wastewater treatment plant. Because in Singapore, we do water reuse, so we have to always pitch it to the public that is reclaiming water, um, new water. So, you know, so it's a public perception thing. So we call it water reclamation plant. So essentially, these are the, the two streams that they were studying. One is the com uh, conventional with the MLE tanks, and the other one is the one with the membrane bioreactor. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a wastewater engineer, so bear with me. Um, right, and these are some of the methods that they use for the analysis. And I'll just run through. So the occurrence of, um, so essentially, these are the data that they came up with. So um, Singapore being very, very urbanized, we don't really have much land, we don't have pristine, that many pristine places, we expected to see level, we expected to have detects in it, but the detects are all very low. So bear in mind that all this, sorry, all this data, we actually do, do look at it and we present it to management. And they will always ask us to do kind of a risk. What, where, where are we? Yeah. So um, in this study, they have all the, so in the raw wastewater influent, um, as expected, we found pretty much some of them, quite a lot of them. In fact, most of them. And then, um, so these are what is covered. So 100% means that you can find them in all the samples. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when they look at um, after treatment, so they have those in gray, the, the, the columns in gray, they are from the influent, then the MLE process, then the SSTs, uh, and then the MBR system. So maybe just to bring your attention, um, there are a lot of details in the paper, but generally after MBR treatment, they do see slightly, slightly lower um, yeah, amounts of some. So this is for antibiotics per se, and then for the rest, yeah. So I apologize for all the multiple, so these are your pharmaceuticals, personal care products, EDCs, and anti-AS. So, um, so what we do, what what this we did with this team is that because a lot of the data came from Europe, US, um, Australia, so they are temperate countries. Their countries is season. We are along the tropics, so near the equator, so we do not have four seasons. So, we always want to compare our data with what is published internationally and see, you know, are we looking at similar um, ranges? So. Um, so this is what we see that is removed in the system in Singapore, and then, and then how it compares. And then so, so these are, those that you see that are highlighted now are those where the removal isn't that great. So these are real data coming from the real wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. So likewise for these as well. So just a snapshot. Yeah, and um, the comparison. So generally, as I mentioned just now, MBR seems to improve basically better. But um, at this moment, I don't think um, we're actively, I can't speak for all my wastewater colleagues, but um, in, to put an extra treatment here, we are looking at resource recovery, but maybe at the water reuse end, we will we'll do more at that part. Yeah. And maybe I'll explain why, because um, Right, so maybe I just finish this first. So the role of the, so what, what the, the study concluded was that the treatment for in, in the primarily settled, settled start sludge and the MLE tank seems to be more important than the MBR itself, but having the MBR there seems to improve the removal slightly. Yeah. 
and this is for the others, the PPCPs and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, so this is the one that we compare to literature. <laughs> so this is what is reported and how we compare. So, well, we can say it's comparable depending on the range, but yeah. And these are the rest. Sorry, the slides are a bit busy. I got them from the university, so um, I, I didn't really curate them much. So um, what we found that there was excellent removal for those with certain properties, so properties like um, the electron receptors, donors, relationship, the hydrophobicity, the adsorption capability. Yeah, so the chemistry part, likewise for this. Yeah. So if you have the, they have low removal if there's the absence of the electron donating groups. And then there's better removal appear apparently from if they have the electron donating groups. So the different compounds, they look at the chemistry and then they try to, to sort of come up with some kind of preliminary assessment. Yeah. So this was conclusion from that study um, before I go on to what, what the rest of PUB context is. So there are certain excellent removals for certain groups of compounds. I think it's, it's probably true for the rest of the world, some of the studies. Um, okay removal, 17 to 90%, and low removals for some like carbamazines and stuff like that. And um, what we realized is that those, um, the effluent coming from the membrane bioreactors is a lot more stable. Um, and that uh, the mechanisms are probably through uh, enhanced removal through the electron donating groups of cations and not so much for the anions. So, um, so maybe just to put it in context, so that was for the wastewater, full-scale full, full scale operational wastewater treatment plants. Um, our approach is always that because of the water loop, we did do other surveys on our surface waters as well. Um, we also do surveys on our treated effluents that we pump out to the sea because we have to be environmentally um, responsible and also because we run desalination plants. So everything is all full circle that we have to be responsible for. So um, back to this part. So essentially, even if we do wastewater treatment, we have to look at how it, it eventually pans out. And because you, if you notice, um, the, the advanced treatment after for the water reuse plants, it will also go back to the reservoirs before I undergo treatment again. So we have to look at different systems. And because I'm from the water quality department, when we look at our sampling and monitoring program, we make sure that we have to capture every water metrics that PUB is in charge of. Yeah. So our challenges, I don't think I'll go through this. We have a lot of excellent presentations just now, but um, I think essentially it varies from population to population. And um, so unlike Europe, unlike Australia, which is huge, we are very small, so we have very urbanized catchments, and that is a real challenge. Not sure if any of you have visited Singapore, but you know, we have a reservoir smack right at the downtown area. Yeah. So, um, and that there's no single water treatment process that can remove it. So it is something that we, my department has worked very closely with the engineers in the operational departments to make sure that we are basically producing a certain amount of water quality that we are accountable to the public because we are the only agency for water. So, um, okay, so this, these are some of the things we, we would do. So we also have worked with GWRC and, and um, so the something that we do have to recognize is that while, while we recognize that is micropollutants is not something that we, we is something that we definitely have to pay attention to and we will pay attention to, um, we also realize that because of the very improv, improvised analytical instruments, we're getting more and more detects. And I mean, I'm a science by training, but when we present to management, a detect spikes fear. So sometimes we have to put it into context in terms of health-based values and, and risk assessments. Yeah, so, um, so we do work with, uh, so for Dr. Shane Snyder, who, Arizona, so they also are uh, area with drought. So we work a lot with them and it's important to recognize that a lot of the highest concentration that is ever measured is, is a lot, lot lower than the therapeutic doses. So we, we do have to take that in context as well. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so this is something that we also have to discuss with our management. Is this something that we have to monitor? 
whether there are guideline values or not. So in PUB, we do monitor 346 parameters, but we only have 113 regulated parameters. And the rest is basically information that we want to know to be accountable to the public. So we don't, we don't report it to the regulator, but we keep the data and we analyze it ourselves. Yeah. So um, this is just something with the World Health Organization because we also work with the World Health Organizations that they do not um, have certain guidelines. Having said that, we are still monitoring in our programs. So, um, so we have been monitoring ECs or micropollutants since 2008 and that year was because that's a year where they decided that we will dam up the downtown area as our 15 drinking water reservoir. And when you have a downtown area that's highly urbanized and you're going to make it in a drinking water source, um, what the management wants to know is, are we producing safe water? So that's where all the baseline studies are come, came about. Um, so we have the micropollutants in our monitoring regime now, which is uh, our department is taking charge of. So we have to test every water matrix that PUB is in charge of. Yeah. And then we have a priority listing of the five uh, criteria. So this we work together with GWRC as well um, on some of the frameworks. And then we look at the local consumption patterns. Um, I, I'm not sure about Europe, but in Singapore, we, we cannot get antibiotics unless it's prescribed by doctors. So yeah, it's not true for the rest of Asia as well. So, so then we have to be very mindful. Um, and then uh, we have to review the priority list because um, what we know this year, next year, we're not sure with the increased urbanization, what we are facing. So these are the criteria that we use to prioritize our micropollutants monitoring programs, consumption, regulation. So um, we, we look at what the European countries are doing. We look at US EPA, we look at WHO as well. So we needed to have a very international approach to this. Yeah. And then the properties, the human toxicity, the degradation, persistence, and the resistance to treatment. Because we know that we do not have all the treatment processes in place for all the wastewater treatment plants. By the way, we only have four wastewater treatment plants, unlike <laughs> Europe, because we are really small and they are rather huge plants. Yeah. Out of the four, only one deals with industrial stream because of our land use planning. The rest of three are domestic streams. Yeah. So um, we get data from the Ministry of Health. So they let us know what are the allowable drugs that can, in Singapore that can come in and which are the drugs that only doctors can prescribe. And then we have an in initial baseline studies. We do a lead survey and then we come up with a priority list. So basis, just as just some information. So essentially we look at the criteria just now and then we look at our monitoring data year after year. Are we looking at an uphill trend? If it is, then maybe we have to be concerned. And so far, for the past decade, it has been quite stable, thank goodness. But um, that doesn't mean that we can, we can be complacent about it. So we have to watch. And being in the tropics is not in our favor sometimes. Yeah. So, um, and then, so those, we have a second priority list that there are compounds that are sometimes detected and sometimes not. So then, because we, we have a central lab, but our central lab has only a fixed number of chemists and we can't do everything. So we have to prioritize our testing. Yeah. And then uh, artificial sweeteners, we sort of listed them as a separate category. So this are uh, our current priority listing. Those on the left side are our first priority and second priority. So we do monitor them at very, very different frequencies for um, micropollutants. Um, so other than those that are regulated, the rest we do monitor them maybe at the biannual basis. If you notice that they are detected more frequently, maybe at a quarterly basis per year. And some of them, if they are not detected for the past 10 years, we do it on an annual basis. So that's basically how we, yeah. And because maybe we are small, so we had, uh, we had rolled out our sewer rehabilitation program over the years. So this is uh, huge in terms of CAPEX. I don't have CAPEX and OPEX numbers here, but some are partially government funded and some are agency funded. So we have come up with quite an uh, amount of CAPEX and OPEX. Yeah, but this really helps to um, decrease some of our point source contamination. We still have some pockets areas here and there. So we, we do know and then we try to you know, work at those areas, but Essentially, I think the, the, the problematic areas in the past have been rehabilitated. Yeah. 
and uh, we can't eliminate them, we know. And uh, so our waste, our water treatment plants, the drinking water treatment plants, we are increasingly upgrading with ozone BACs as well. Um, part of the other reason is because we are warm, so we have algae, algae. So we have MIB Josmine issues, which is why the ozone BAC is also very important. And then the new treatment processes, um, we are testing them in the pilot plants more for the water reuse ends, so something in additional to our MF, UF, RO, UV. Yeah. So, um, so currently, most of those in our list are not detected based on the current analytical capabilities. So things may change if the detection limits get lower and lower with time. Um, we do work with Australia and then we take, take into reference some of the values. Um, so I guess, it, it really helped us that years ago, one of my founding prime ministers, we, we separated the, the sewers and the drainage systems. I think that helped, but, but also because we are a very small island that we could pump it to the sea. Yeah, but that, that actually helped us reduce some of the problems of pumping it back to our source waters. And that, um, yeah, this is essentially, so we either go to the sea or we go to the, what we call the new water factories that are for water reuse with the advanced processes, UV, RO, MF, UF. Yeah. And then our, all our desalination plants currently have ROs as well. So, yeah. So, okay. So just to qualify, we, we would, when we say it's not a concern, uh, what we mean is at the health toxicity level. Yeah, but it, it doesn't mean that we will we'll continue to monitor. So my, the chemists in our labs have to continue to work very hard. Um, so we have to have this monitoring regime. This is also evaluated at a very, and then we get questions from the, the management from time to time is, is it sufficient? Can we do more? And then the department that I'm from, so we try to upgrade with more and more good chemistry, um, chemical and analytical instruments. And then we update our priority list with time, from time to time and that um, we, we started with some of the pilot projects for water reuse. Yep, and with that... <laughs> 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 I covered. Thank you very much. Thank you.